James Kaufman, World News Report today. Today is November 18th, 2023, 4.30 p.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. NOAA has come out and warned about large, far-side sunspots that will be coming around the limb. We can't see the far side of the sun, but we know what's there. The science of helioseismology allows researchers to make a crude map of the sun's hidden hemisphere. NOAA's latest map reveals two very large far-side sunspots that will be coming around the limb to be Earth-facing early next week. The black blobs that you see here are the sunspots, and they're so large that they're affecting the way the whole sun vibrates. Indeed, these vibrations are the data used by the helioseismologists to pinpoint the unseen sunspots. Both sunspots will rotate onto the Earth's side of the sun again early next week. I'm going to let y'all see those over on STO as well. We can see 098, huge sunspot here in gray coming around the limb, about to really crisp the limb itself. And then we have 101, the large orange sunspot, although we also have three, four additional sunspots coming around the limb. So it should be a hectic week. With that said, we've already seen three M flares today, and we've seen our baseline shoot up to what looks like about a C2 plus baseline. So we see a big uptick in solar activity occurring now. We also just got a warning from NOAA that we should see a geomagnetic storm tomorrow on November 19th and the next day on November 20th. But how is that possible? Just looking at the activity over the last few days, it would have to come from these solar flares that happened on the 14th and 15th. And ladies and gentlemen, I think that ship has sailed. I have no idea who issued a geomagnetic warning. Currently, we have no indications on any of our KP indexes of any solar storm. However, we have two very strange step-ups as far as solar plasma here on real-time solar winds discover satellite. You can see here that we have solar wind at around 7 centimeters cubed, and that's going to pop up to over almost 22 centimeters cubed, only to pop right back down to 3.41. And then, after all that's said and done, it pops right back up to, let me get a good number for y'all, 19.95. We have a little bit of data missing here, as you can see, about 30 minutes. Nothing, nothing in the playbook would cause these large step-ups. Remember, from 21.91 centimeters down to 3.23, back up to the 19.95 that we just had a hold of. There it was, right there. So nothing explains any of this, period. I do see that the temperature is reacting with the plasma, but ladies and gentlemen, uh, why isn't the KP index reacting, and what would have caused these strange hour-and-a-half, hour step-ups in plasma? that are double, triple, quadruple the baseline that we're seeing next to it. Very, very difficult to understand. Our shields are up, as we can see here in blue. So we'll have to see what happens. But right now, we're being told that we have an inbound CME, which is just about impossible. And we're being told that, well, we also have two very large, dangerous sunspots to deal with early next week and throughout all of next week, not to mention the three M flares that we've already seen Earth facing today. Now you guys know I would point out where the M flares originated from if I had that information. 
They don't even have the last M flare here down yet. They don't know where the first M1.2 came from or the following M1.1 came from. You can see the timestamps 537 and 1634. We will take a look at core to see if we can see them today. But again, they haven't even tried to determine where either one of those flares originated and they haven't addressed the most recent flare that's still ongoing. Currently, we have absolutely no direct Earth-facing sunspots. We only have two sunspot groups, both in the southern hemisphere. Uh, one of them is about to go around the limb, probably already has AR3486. And then coming around the limb, we see AR3489. Now, we'll take a look at GOES to see if we can determine where that last M flare came from, and we'll have to assume that the rest of the M flares came from the same sunspot group. All right, heading over to GOES at 195 angstroms, you can see that that flare probably originates right there from 3489. Uh, not a big deal, a 1.1 M class flare. The only other thing that we could imagine is that these big filaments up here have been releasing. You can see this large filament here in the northern hemisphere. Let's also not forget that coral hole that just appeared in front of our eyes uh, two days ago. That could be why they're forecasting a solar storm. But what we just saw was two step-ups of plasma double the space weather threshold of 10 centimeters cubed of plasma. Where did that come from? Definitely not our sun, a secondary source of energy. Finally, headed over to our D region absorption prediction center. Are the x rays hitting us? You bet they are. We're at a baseline of a C2. We so also caught the last two M flares. One looks like it popped off right over South America and Central America and parts of both the Atlantic and Pacific. And the second one has just popped off. And that one's going to be situated almost on top of Hawaii. Definitely covers most of the Pacific Ocean. With that said, God bless each and every one of you guys. Please explain to me how the plasma went from 3 to 20, back to 3, and then back to 20. Share, subscribe, and always remember that anything's possible in Bizarro World.